Hi and welcome to Vinex Studio. We'll be learning what is a VFX graph, how to install VFX graph in Unity, how it works, and how to create a simple fire effect using the VFX graph. In the end of the tutorial, we'll be comparing the VFX graph and the particle system. So stay tuned to know how it improves the performance over particle system. Now we all know that Unity's particle system is great for creating visual effects but it has its own limitations. The main difference between the particle system and the VFX graph is the particle system runs on the CPU and the VFX graph uses the GPU. So this allows the VFX graph to run visual effects parallelly to our computations. Now to get started with the visual effects, you'll have to go to Windows, Package Manager, and make sure you select Unity Registry and search for visual effect graph. So once you see the package, click on Install and it will take some time and install the visual effect graph. We can also import samples to see what Unity has done with them. So now that the visual effect graph is ready, to create a new visual effect graph, you'll have to go to the project window, right click, go to create, and under visual effects, you will have an option of visual effect graph. Now this will create a graph a set like this. So you can name it whatever you want. So here I am named it as fire graph. Now, whenever you create a VFX graph, it is not added to the scene by default. So you need to create a visual effect game object in your scene in order to assign this. This is very similar to animation in Unity where you create the animation clip, then you use the animator component to play the animation clips. So to add a visual effect game object, click on the plus sign here in the hierarchy and click on visual effects and visual effect. So this will add an object like this. It is basically an empty game object with the visual effect component. So you can add the visual effect component to any game object and start playing your visual effects. So all you have to do is just assign the visual effect graph to the asset template and it will start playing. So for the sake of this tutorial, we'll create a simple fire using this. So I'm just going to delete the fire graph that is already there. And I'll create a new one. So create visual effects visual effect graph and I'm going to call this fire graph under the asset template you can just drag and drop this fire graph here so that you'll be able to live preview it now you can just double click to open the graph editor and you can align it here so that you'll be able to see the scene view and the graph editor so the first thing that you see is the particle system so you can add multiple particle systems like this you can just go right click create node and search for particle system so it will have empty particle system and you select empty particle system it adds another particle system to it so as of now we don't require this so we'll just delete that and the empty particle system has a spawn module a initialize particle module an update particle module and a quad particle module okay so this is the flow required for a basic particle system in unity's vfx graph so if you break this flow and remove one of these modules this particle system might not work now inside every module like for inside the spawn module you can add blocks so there's a constant spawn rate block added here so if you don't want the block you can just delete it off and if you want to add new blocks you can just right click and say create block then we'll add a variable spawn rate so we'll just click variable spawn rate here now you can also add blocks outside in the workspace and connect to each parameters. For example, if you want to expose a vector two that connects to the rate that can be controlled from outside, then you can just right click here, say create node, and we can search for vector two operator. Okay. So and connect it to rate. So now if we say y is 10, you can see that the rate value has become 10 here. And you can also just click here and you can say expose property convert to expose property if you do that it will be under your blackboard and now if you select your game object in the hierarchy and go to the inspector you should be able to see the property here so you can now set the property from the inspector itself so if you don't want that you can just select it and click on delete and you can remove the property also in the same way so now for creating the fire effect let's just set the rate between 100 and 300 but as you can see the rate did not increase much it is because under initialized particle the capacity is set to 32 we will increase that to 200 so now you can see the number of particles has increased now the default particle has an initial velocity already set so we are not going to disturb that because it's already moving in the upward direction and we want the fire to move in the upward direction 
So under the initialized particle, we need another extra block that is going to be a spawn shape. So we're going to say create block and we're going to search for spear because we want the initial position to be a spear rather than just a point. So still we need it to be a very small spear. So we'll just go inside and find the radius and we'll set it to 0.1. Now, if you feel that the space is not enough, you can rearrange the modules like this. Now under the update particle, I'm going to just set the velocity of the particles to increase in the upward direction. So we'll just right click and we'll say create block and we'll say add velocity. It's not set velocity because the velocity is already set. We want the velocity to increase every frame. So it's going to be add velocity. And this value is going to be a very small value. So it's going to be 0, 0, 002 so that the fire is able to move faster in the upward direction. Now it's time to make it look like a fire. So first select the blend mode from alpha to additive. This will make your fire bright. And this orient block face camera plane, this is used to basically have a billboard effect. What it means is no matter from which direction you're looking from, the particles will face the camera. So it will give you a 3D effect, even though the particles that are coming out are just 2D sprites. Now for the size over lifetime, just click on the graph. We want the initial size to be somewhere around 0.5. Then at the center, we want it to be larger in size and we want it to be very small when it's going to disappear. Now we'll go to color over life. So let's select the color. The initial color is going to be bright yellow. So we'll have something like this. Then at the end, it's going to be little reddish. Now we're going to reduce the alpha a little bit. Okay. Now the color is fine, but the shape of the particle is not looking like fire. It's still looking like bubbles. So that's because you have to set a main texture. So if you have a custom texture, you can set that or Unity has a smoke particle. So you can use the smoke, simple smoke texture for this. So now you can see that it looks like fire. Okay. Now still the intensity is not high. So, so select the color, click on increasing the intensity till you feel that it's more like a fire and this color should be even darker so somewhere like this and we can move this a little bit forward till we get the desired effect okay yeah this looks fine the center okay yeah this looks a little fine but the yeah now once we have set to make the colors more blend in, you can just go to the color mapping option under output particle quad and select gradient mapped. So now your fire suddenly started looking much better and it totally looks like a fire. The only thing that we are missing is the smoke particles and some particles are going way beyond the fire value. And that's because we'll just set the alpha value of the color. So we'll just set this alpha to be somewhere here so that the particles disappear really fast. So now the fire is ready. Now we need the smoke. So all we have to do in case of particle system, we generally add a new particle system for the smoke. Here in the, under the VFX graph, you can add multiple particle system inside a single VFX graph. So you just select this. We'll just right click and we'll say group selection and then you can name it. So we're going to name it as fire. And you can also name the quad particle. I'll tell you why we are going to name it. So you just have to say name context and we're going to say it as fire quad. So we have named two things. The whole particle system is called fire and this quad particle is called fire quad. Now just select the whole thing, we'll say control C and control V. So that creates another particle system. And we're going to name it as smoke. And under the quad, we're going to name it as smoke quad. Okay. Now the first thing we need to do is under the color mapping, it, it needs to be set to default. And then the color 
is going to be all in gray. So I like this. And this one, sorry. And this one selected. This is also going to be gray. And this one selected. This is also going to be gray. So after you set the color, just set the blend mode to alpha. So now you should see some black smokes coming on the back. You can increase the velocity of the particle, the add velocity to a, almost the double of whatever you're used to fire. So you can give 0.4 here so that the smoke is able to reach higher. In most of the cases, the smoke particle will be rendered in front of the fire. We do not want that. The smoke should be on back of the fire. So if the, that is happening to you, just go to the inspector, select the fire graph, and you'll see an option for render order. The smoke should be first and the fire should be next. The one which is first in the order will be rendered on the back side. So if the smoke quad is after the fire quad, and if we go back to the fire graph, you can see that the smoke has actually covered the fire particle completely. So you can arrange like which one should be rendered first and which one should be rendered on the back. So with that, now fire effect is ready. Now let's see what are the major difference between the particle system and the VFX graph. Now the first major difference is particle system runs on a CPU and VFX graph will run on the GPU. So thereby reducing the load on your CPU and your game performance will not be affected as much as the particle system. The second major difference is the VFX graph can only be used with URP and HDRP. And even with URP, it is still under development for mobile devices. So if your target platform is a mobile device, then you should not use VFX graph. You should stick with the particle system. Major difference is particle system can only render up to 1000 particles, whereas the VFX graph can render up to millions of particles, thereby making the effect look much better. Other than these major differences, both the particle system and the VFX graph can be used to achieve the same effect. So it is totally up to you whether you want to use the particle system or the VFX graph. But if you're going for a high quality and detailed effect that you're going to run on a HDRP scene or a URP scene on a target platform that can handle this, then you should definitely go with the VFX graph. So that's it for getting started with Unity's VFX graph. I'll be creating multiple tutorial on Unity VFX. So if you have any requirement for, for a particular visual effect, then you can leave them in the comment box below and we'll try to create a tutorial for that. Thank you for your time and see you in the next tutorial.